Mighty Companions. Here we go. This is Earl Purdy. I want to welcome you to Hardcore, Hardcore Course in Miracles with Earl Purdy. I'm going to talk about the treachery of specialness. We're going to talk about the treachery of specialness. We're going to talk about the treachery of specialness in our Hardcore Course in Miracles class here on Facebook Live. I want to welcome all of my mighty companions. This is a Hardcore Course in Miracles class that's primarily directed towards students of the course who have been studying or who are presently really studying the material. It's not so much for a beginner. Guess what? Can you hear it? Tell me, can you feel it? Put your arms around it and know that we are one. We're talking about the treachery of specialists. The treachery of specialists. Page 502. Page 502. Page 502. In A Course in Miracles text, Foundation for Inner Peace version, page 502. The Treachery of Specialness in chapter 24. When you choose him, you know you choose me too. Everyone becomes a part of Remember, remember, you don't have to believe it, you don't have to accept it or welcome it. Some of it's going to be hard to believe and quite startling. But if you use the ideas, you'll see that the ideas are true.
That was Brother John Christmas. You can get his music at johnchristmas.com. You can get what you just heard totally free. So take a breath right now. We're going to go deep into A Course in Miracles. As you know, I've been doing The Course in Miracles and teaching it and sharing it for almost 40 years, and I'm here to, to save time, to save you time. And one of the ways I do that is I use The Course in Miracles to teach The Course in Miracles, and I show people how to read The Course in Miracles in a way that could make it make a lot more sense and be powerful for them. So it's geared toward people who are studying A Course in Miracles. And what I want to do is I go through the paragraph, I just read through the paragraph first on page 502 in the Treachery of Specialists, chapter 24, section 2, and then I go back through it in more detail. And then I also look at the comments and respond to any questions. But I don't analyze A Course in Miracles. My, my purpose is to be a messenger. So I'm going to focus on delivering the message that we're getting. So we're going to be focusing on hearing what it's saying. Not necessarily believing it or welcoming it or accepting it yet, but just make sure we're clear about what it's saying. So let's do the first paragraph. I'm going to read it right quick. Comparison must be an ego device. For love makes no comparison. Specialness always makes comparisons. Specialness is established by a lack seen in another and maintained by searching for and keeping clear in sight all lacks it can perceive. This does specialness seek, and this specialness looks upon, and always whom specialness thus diminishes would be your savior, had you not chosen to make of him a tiny measure of your specialness instead. Against the littleness that you see in another, you stand as tall and stately, clean and honest, pure and unsullied, by comparison with what you see. Nor do you understand it is <clears throat> yourself you diminish thus. Hello, everybody. Okay, let's get let's jump into this. Uh, the first line says, comparison must be an e ego device because love makes no comparison. So right off the bat, The Course in Miracles is telling us that love doesn't compare. Love doesn't compare. So when I'm really experiencing love, when you're really experiencing love, you're not comparing. And it says, comparison must be an ego device. So it's only the ego that compares. So does that mean that it's only the part of the mind that's fearful, frightened, and separate that compares? That's exactly right. The ego is just the part of the mind that thinks it's completely on its own. The ego is the part of you that thinks you are completely on your own. The ego is the part of your mind that thinks it is completely on its own, and it's the part of the mind that believes that we are separate. So comparison must be an ego device. So another term for ego is fear. Another term for ego is fear. So comparison is a fear device. Comparison is a device of the part of the mind that thinks it's alone. Love doesn't make any comparison. Love doesn't make any comparison. So what does that mean? Whenever you're reading The Course in Miracles and you want to get a more clarity on something that you read, keep reading. Don't stop and analyze it. Keep reading. The Course in Miracles anticipates 
the reactions that we're going to have to it when we're reading. The Course in Miracles anticipates how you're going to react to it as you read it. So if you just take a breath and keep on reading when you don't understand something, eventually you're going to get to a sentence that makes sense to you that will help you understand the other parts that didn't make any sense to you. So comparison is a fear device. Love makes no comparison. Specialness always makes comparisons. Do you know that when you're in a special relationship with someone, sometimes you find yourself comparing how that person treats another person compared to how they treat you? In order to feel special, you have to make comparisons. So specialness always makes comparisons. Specialness always makes comparisons. But it just told us what? Comparisons are a device of the ego. So a special relationship based on comparisons is a relationship based on fear and a relationship based on the ego. Specialness does what? Always makes comparisons. Love never makes comparisons. So what does that mean? Well, it means that specialness is established how do you establish specialness? The way that you establish specialness is by a lack seen in another. So how do I make myself special? I see and try to find what's lacking in you, what's wrong with you, what's missing in you, what's wrong with you. So when I'm trying to make myself special, I'm going to try to do that by seeing some kind of a lack in another. And do you know that specialness is maintained? How do you maintain specialness? Well, the Course in Miracles says you maintain specialness by searching for and keeping clear in sight every lack that you can see. So when I want to feel special, I'm going to look for something that's wrong or lacking in other people. And if I want to maintain my specialness, I'm going to search for and I'm going to try to keep clearly in sight. I'm going to try to see as clearly as I can what's lacking in someone else. When I want to be special, when I'm a fear-based person, when I'm an insecure person, when I'm a person who does not love themselves, when I'm identified with my ego, when I think I'm completely on my own, when I think I'm a frightened human being, then I use comparison in order to try to make myself feel special. And I try to make myself feel special by looking for lacks in someone else. And I'm searching for any kind of lack in someone else. And I'm always looking at what's wrong with someone else. So complaining about other people, judging other people, looking for faults in other people is just a misguided attempt for that person to try to make themselves special. When you're trying to make yourself special, when you're trying to be special from A Course in Miracles perspective, when you're trying to be special, you're just trying to find something that's lacking in someone else so that you can feel more special or better than them. So The Course in Miracles says, this does specialness seek. This is what specialness looks upon. What is it that specialness seeks? What is it that specialness looks upon? All the lacks it can perceive. So specialness is looking for every lack it can perceive. And what happens next? Well, it says, always whom spe specialness thus diminishes would be your savior. So everyone that, any, anyone that a person is diminishing by trying to make themselves feel special, by looking for what's lacking in someone else, you're actually diminishing someone who could really be helping you, who could really be loving you. The Course in Miracles says, this is a person that could be your savior. This is a person that could be giving you love, giving you peace. This is a person who really and truly could be helping you. But the Course in Miracles says, had you not chosen to make of that person that being what? A tiny measure of your specialness instead. Okay, so what, is that, what does that say? Well, all it's saying is, I'm trying to criticize you so that I can think I'm better than you, so that I can feel special. 
So I'm really trying to uh, bring you down when you really could be my savior. You really could be the best thing that ever happened to me. You really could be my friend. You really could be somebody that's loving me. But, I, but I'm trying to make of you a tiny measure of my specialness. I'm trying to use you to make myself special. So does that mean that whenever we are judging and criticizing others, that it's just a misguided attempt to make yourself be special? That is exactly what we just heard. That that judgment and comparison is just an attempt to make yourself better than somebody else and to see yourself as special in some kind of way. Specialness always makes comparisons. Love doesn't make comparisons. And do you know that the way that you establish specialness is to see some type of a lack in somebody else, search for a lack in somebody else, completely focus on what's missing in somebody else so that you can be more special. But what did the Course in Miracles just tell us? It just told us that actually that person could have been your savior if you weren't trying to make of this person a tiny measure of your specialness. So what's the solution? What is the solution? Well, the next sentence, against the littleness that you see in the other. I'm going to sometimes paraphrase, paraphrase to make this sound more conversational. Um, against the littleness that you see in the other person, you stand as tall and stately. So because I, because I see what's missing in you and I criticize you and judge you against the littleness I see in you, then I stand tall. I stand stately. I'm the one that's clean. I'm the one that's honest in comparison to you. I'm the one that's pure and unsullied in comparison to you <clears throat> by comparison with what you see. One of the ways that I see that being acted out very beautifully is in the political system, especially between the Democrats and the Republicans. Uh, they constantly judge and compare and criticize and look for lacks in each other in order to make one seem like it's better than the other, which is special. But the truth is, the Republicans could be the saviors of the Democrats, and the Democrats really could be the saviors of the Republicans if we weren't making comparisons, but we were really loving each other. But against the littleness that the Republicans see in the Democrats, or the Democrats see in the Republicans, the other one stands tall, stately, clean, honest, pure, and unsullied by comparison to what they see. He says, what we don't understand, what is it that the Course in Miracles is saying we don't understand? We don't understand that it's just yourself that you are diminishing. When I diminish you, I'm diminishing myself because we are one self. When you diminish someone else, you are diminishing yourself. When you diminish someone else, you're diminishing yourself. When you diminish someone else, judge someone else, criticize someone else, condemn someone else, try to make yourself seem like you're better than someone else, you're diminishing your savior and you're diminishing yourself. That's what the Course in Miracles wants us to hear. It, it's not interested in whether how much we understand that or how much we agree with that. It just wants to state a fact, which is if you're doing a lot of comparison, you often your ego, which is your fear-based mind. So what's the other thing? D to remember that love doesn't make any kind of comparison. What's the other thing? To remember that specialness always involves comparisons. And to be special, you have to constantly try to search for and maintain clear in your sight what seems to be lacking or missing in the other person, which, which keeps you from seeing that person as your savior, which is your helper. And what else did the Course in Miracles say to us? Against the littleness that I see in the other person, then I stand as really tall and stately and clean and honest. I'm so much better than you, honey child. And I don't realize that I'm diminishing myself by seeing you as less than is actually diminishing me. So that is what the Course in Miracles is saying. I am not making that up. If you have the book, you just saw it's down there on the page in front of you. There is no need to analyze the Course in Miracles. There is no need to project your meanings onto the words of a Course in Miracles. It just states simple facts. So, what is the so so? What is some of the comments here? Uh, one comment is no one I can't stand any political any politics. Again, if I can't stand politics, then that's still me comparison comparing myself 
to the politicians and seeing myself as being better than the politicians. So my upset with the politicians is also my attempt to be special. And it's also me diminishing a person that actually somehow or another the, the politicians could teach me some lesson that would make them my savior because they are people. And so therefore, even me getting upset with the, pol with the politicians and the political system is still somehow me trying to see myself as what? Uh, more tall, more stately, more clean, more honest, more pure, and more unsullied by comparison to what I see. So that's what blows my mind about The Course in Miracles. It's like I can't get away with anything with The Course in Miracles. If I'm judging, I'm trying to make myself special. It's what The Course in Miracles is telling me. That if I'm judging, I'm trying to make myself special. Um, when you diminish you, you diminish me. That's right. Uh, yes, when I diminish you, I'm looking at the comments. Yes, when I diminish you, I am diminishing myself. We are one. We are not separate. When I uplift you, I uplift me. Oh, well, thank God politics and all things are neutral. Depends on what we want to use it for. That is exactly right. Everything is neutral. It just depends on what you want to use it for. Agree. So it's important, like uh, Shahira is saying, I'm laughing at me. Oh, ow, Trump is my savior. Yes, Trump is your savior. Because what? Trump is what? What is Trump? What is Trump? What is Trump? Trump is your brother. Trump is a holy son of God, just like I am, just like you are. We are all one. We are all creations of love. We all are one. So I want to make myself special by definitely uh, comparing myself to Trump looking looking for what's missing in Trump, what's lacking in Trump, and then I'm keeping Trump from being somebody that could possibly benefit me or be my savior in some way because I'm trying to use him as a tiny measure of my specialness. Uh, and against the littleness that I see in Trump, then I get to, get to stand as tall and stately, clean and honest, pure and unsullied by comparison with the Trump I see. Nor do I understand that it is myself I'm diminishing that way. Yes, you're absolutely right. I don't realize that I'm diminishing myself when I diminish Trump or anyone. That's the message. Doesn't mean I have to like it. Doesn't mean I have to agree with it. But that's the message. <clears throat> wow, that is really deep. That is really deep. So let, let's do the next paragraph. Pursuit of specialness is always at the cost of peace. The pursuit of specialness is always at the cost of peace. The pursuit of specialness is always at the cost of peace. The pursuit of specialness is always at the cost of peace. Who can attack his savior and cut his savior down, yet recognize his savior's strong support? Who can detract from their Savior's omnipotence, yet share their Savior's power? Who can distract from their Savior's omnipotence, yet share their Savior's power? And who can use their brother as a gauge of littleness? And who can use their brother as a gauge of littleness and be released from limits? Who can use another as a gauge of littleness and be released from limits? You have a function in salvation. You have a function in salvation. <clears throat> Salvation's pursuit will bring you joy. But the pursuit of specialness but the pursuit of specialness must bring you pain. The pursuit of specialness must bring you pain. The pursuit of specialness must bring you pain. Here is a goal specialness that would defeat salvation. And here is a goal, specialness, that runs counter to the will of God. The goal of specialness runs counter to the will of God. To value specialness 
to value specialness, to value specialness, to value specialness, is to esteem an alien will, is to esteem an alien will, to which illusions of yourself are dearer than the truth. To which illusions of yourself are dearer than the truth. Okay, so what is paragraph two telling us? What is paragraph two telling us? Okay, let me show you how to do it. The pursuit of specialness is always at the cost of peace. Well, that's the same as saying the pursuit of looking for lacks seen in another, maintained by searching for and keeping clear in sight all lacks you can see in another, is always at the cost of peace because that's the Course in Miracles definition of specialness that we got in the first paragraph. The Course in Miracles definition of specialness is comparisons, looking for lacks in someone else, trying to keep it clear in your sight, everything that looks like is lacking in someone else so that you can seem like you're better than the other person or more special than the other person. So the Course is saying pursuit of specialness. Pursuit of looking for what's wrong in somebody else so that you can feel better about yourself is always at the cost of peace. Who can attack his savior, cut his savior down, and yet recognize his strong support? If I'm your savior and you are cutting me down, how can you recognize my strong support? How can you how can you attack me and be supported by me? How can you attack me and then recognize my strong support? So the more that you attack somebody that you don't like, then the less possibility you have that you're going to have their strong support. It's very difficult to support someone who's always attacking you. It's very difficult to want to support someone who you feel is always attacking you, always putting you down, always seeing you in terms of how you are lacking. So if you do that to anybody, then it's hard to recognize their support. It's hard to recognize anybody's strong support if you're attacking them and cutting them down, whether it's Trump or whether it's anybody else. How can you attack? Because ultimately, whether we can see it or not, we have to realize that everybody is our savior. Everybody is our savior. Everybody is our savior, even the people that we don't like, even the people that you don't like, even the people that you don't agree with. They are still your saviors. They are still your healers. They are still your helpers. According to the Course in Miracles, everyone is a savior. Everyone is helping everyone, even if it doesn't look like it, even if you don't recognize it. Everything is for your own best interest. But that doesn't mean that you should do anything other than what? Express love, not use comparisons. Express love. So what should I do? Well, even if I don't believe it, I need to start seeing, I need to start seeing Trump as my savior as in the sense that this is a person that can help me remember the truth. A savior is someone that helps you remember who you really are. A savior is someone who helps you remember the truth. That's what we mean when we say savior. This is a person that can be used to help you remember what the truth is. A savior is someone who can help you remember the truth. When we talk about savior, we're not talking about the classic definitions of savior. We're talking about the Course in Miracles definition of savior. And the Course in Miracles definition of savior is someone who, someone who remembers the truth about you, someone you can use to remember the truth, someone that you can see as a call for God and a call for love. That is your savior. So pursuit of specialness is always at the, it's gonna cost you your peace. Who can attack his savior? and cut his savior down, and yet recognize his savior's strong support. Then it says, who can distract from their savior's omnipotence and share their savior's power? I cannot see you as not being omnipotent and great. I, cannot, I, I can't see you as weak and sharing your power. You cannot see another person as weak and then share in their power. And who can use their savior, the other person, as a gauge of littleness, and be released from limits. So how can I use you and how can I use you as a means of making myself look good and be released from limits? How can I see you as limited and then be released from limits myself? Do you know that you cannot 
put a limitation on another person that you are not putting on yourself. And what did it tell us next? You have a function in salvation. And the Course in Miracles defines salvation as forgiveness. It defines salvation as right-mindedness. It defines salvation as love. It defines salvation as peace. It defines salvation as healing. So do you know you have a function in salvation? You have a function in healing. You have a function in healing. You have a function in bringing love and peace to this world. You have a function. Specialness, it, it, no, fulfilling your function will bring you joy. For, for, for fulfilling your function will bring you joy. Fulfilling your function, which is to be the truth of the world, the light of the world, the sanity in the world. Your function is to be sane in an insane world. Your function is to be sane in an insane world. So the Course in Miracles is saying that pursuit will bring you joy. Pursuing love will bring you joy. Pursuing the truth will bring you joy. Okay, so what would be the truth that I would need to pursue. The truth of knowing that specialness, the pursuit of specialness is always at the cost of peace. Recognizing that judging and comparing myself and putting down other people so that I can feel better, that will cost me my peace. And not putting people down, seeing them as innocent, seeing them as one with me, seeing them as also children of God, seeing them as spirit, this will bring me joy. But the pursuit of specialness must bring you pain. There it is right there in front of us. Pursuing specialness, pursuing comparison. Don't forget another term for specialness is comparison. So the pursuit of comparison must bring you pain. The pursuit of comparing yourself to others. And, and notice that it says must bring you pain. It's going to bring you pain to constantly compare yourself to other people, whether you compare yourself and see yourself is coming up short or compare yourself and see the other person is coming up short. Any form of comparison, which is specialness, will bring you pain. So a special relationship is a comparison relationship when the two people in the relationship are always telling each other what they're not doing, what's missing, what's wrong. So the pursuit of specialness must bring you pain here is a goal that would defeat healing, which is salvation. So what is the goal that would defeat salvation? The pursuit of specialness. The pursuit of specialness would defeat your peace. It would defeat your healing. It would defeat your happiness. Because specialness, comparing yourself, seeing lacks in yourself and seeing lacks in others, that runs counter to the will of God <clears throat> because the will of God, the will of love, according to the Course, is that we know ourselves as whole and perfect and equal, that we are the same, that we are all love, that we are all loving, that we are all lovable. Now, right now, you might notice a temptation within yourself to think of all the reasons why what this is saying is not true. You may find yourself thinking about all the evil, bad people and situations and persons in this world. But if you're doing that, you're actually pursuing specialness because now you are comparing yourself and looking for what you see as lacks in someone else. And the Course in Miracles is saying, you all may not know it, but that person could be your savior. That person is your savior and you are diminishing your savior by, by coming up in your mind with everything that's wrong with this other person. And I and when I hear this, there's a part of me that goes, yes, but, yes, but, yes, but, yes, but. Forget the yes, buts. The Course is simply giving us a message. It's not trying to convince us of anything. It's just trying to give us a message. What is the message? If you pursue specialness, it's going to cost you your peace. What's the message? If you attack somebody else, and cut them down, then you're not going to have their strong support. What's the message? 
How can I distract from your power and then think that I have power too? What's the message? How can I see you as little and limited without limiting myself? What's the message? You have a function. What's the message? If you will do your function, you will have joy. What's the message? Whenever you pursue specialness, it's going to bring you pain. Whenever you pursue comparison and putting anybody else down and comparing yourself to somebody else and seeing them as lacking, it's going to bring you pain. What's the message? When you want to be special, that's a goal that would defeat your healing. That's a goal that would defeat salvation. What's the message? Wanting to be special, better than or less than someone else, that's counter to the will of God. Because the will of God, the will of love, is that we are all equal and we are all, we are all perfect and we are all whole. What's the message? When you value specialness, you are esteeming an alien will to which illusions of yourself are dearer than the truth. When you value specialness, you have false ideas about yourself that mean more to you than the truth does. Because specialness is a false idea a false idea that that creates false ideas about yourself. You are not greater than and you are not less than anyone. You are not greater than anyone. You are not less than anyone. You are not greater than anyone and you are not less than anyone. You are not greater than anyone and you are not less than anyone. So to value specialness is to esteem an alien will. What is an alien will? An alien will is a will in which false ideas about yourself and somebody else are dearer to you and more valuable to you than the truth. And the truth is you are not special in the sense that you are not better than anyone else and you are not less than anyone else. We are all equal. That's what the second paragraph said. That's what the second paragraph said. And here are some of the comments. Salvation is forgiveness, right-mindedness, peace, and healings. And you do have a function in healing. Let go of comparisons. We never win when we compare. Comparing myself to others sure brings me pain. Yes, when I'm looking at lacks in another, I am diminishing my Savior. This is the truth. No exceptions. We are all perfect. Specialness is based on on hatred. We are all equal, not greater than or less than anyone. Those are the comments and that's and that's what we need to do. We need to hear this and we need to reinforce this in our own minds and we need to remember this. So let's go to paragraph three. I'm going to read it then go through it. You know the, you know the process. Specialness is the idea of sin made real. Sin is impossible even to imagine without this base of specialness. For the idea of sin arose from specialness, out of nothingness. The idea of sin is an evil flower with no roots at all. Here is the self-made Savior, the Creator, who creates unlike the Father, and which made His Son like to Himself and not like unto Him. His special sons are never are many, never one, each one in exile from himself and him of whom they are a part. Nor do they love the oneness which created them as one with him. They chose their specialness instead of heaven and instead of peace and wrapped their specialness carefully in sin to keep it safe from truth. Okay, let's look at that third paragraph. Now, I don't mind telling you, the third paragraph is, is, is a trip paragraph because it talks about the thing that I found that many, many Course in Miracles students hate the word sin. When you use the word sin, that trips a lot of Course in Miracles students out. So as usual, the Course in Miracles has its own definition of sin. But also, I want you to try to remember that the Course in Miracles is only ever talking about love. It's talking about love and talking about fear. How to undo the fear 
so that you can experience love. So specialness is the idea of sin made real. It's the same as saying specialness is the idea of fear made real. Sin is impossible even to imagine without specialness because specialness is always based on comparing and seeing what's lacking or wrong with someone else so that you will feel better. So the Course in Miracles says that it would be impossible that there even be an idea of sin without the idea of specialness, that the whole belief in sin arose from the idea of specialness. And it's out of nothingness. It's an evil flower with no roots at all. Then if you notice, it says, here is the self-made savior, the creator who creates unlike the father and with, and which made his son like to itself and not like unto him. In other words, <clears throat> the Course in Miracles basically says we chose our specialness instead of heaven, instead of God, and instead of peace. And we wrapped our specialness carefully in the idea of sin to keep our idea of specialness safe from truth. Do you know that one of the most popular things that people say in a relationship when someone else sees somebody else outside of the relationship is that you cheated on me. You're a bad person. You're a sinful person. And again, I'm trying to protect my specialness. I'm afraid somebody's going to take my specialness away. I'm still comparing myself to somebody else. So the Course in Miracles is saying to us that the idea of specialness is the idea behind all condemnation, all guilt, all fear comes from the idea of specialness, which is the idea of what? Comparing, which is the idea of seeing somebody as greater than me or less than me, better than me or worse than me. That is just repeating what we've heard and that we've actually created the idea of specialness. That idea of specialness is our personal child. And the Course in Miracles says that the idea of specialness is, is the idea of us being separate from God, all of us in exile, separate from God, separate from ourselves. And one thing that's interesting, it says, nor do they love the oneness which created them as one with him. That people who believe in sin and guilt and fear and separation and specialness, the Course says they don't really love oneness. They don't love the oneness which created them. We don't. He says, we don't love the oneness that created us and also created us one with God. What we love is the idea of being separate, the idea of being special, the idea of being different. We don't love the oneness which created us as one with God. The Course in Miracles says, those who believe in sin, they chose their specialness instead of heaven, their specialness instead of love, their specialness instead of truth, and instead of peace, and wrap their specialness carefully in sin to keep it safe from truth. So, most people would tend to want to choose to be special more than they would want to tend to choose the truth, which is based on love and freedom and no limits whatsoever. So the Course in Miracles says we're more in love with being special than we are in love with God, that we're more in love with being special than we are in, uh, in, in being one with each other. That specialness, which is what? comparisons, comparisons, believing that you're better or less, better than or less than someone else. Special means I want to think I'm either better than someone else or that I'm, I'm less than someone else. So I'm going to keep saying that so that we'll understand that the Course in Miracles, when it's saying special, is talking about comparing yourself to somebody and comparing yourself to somebody, judging somebody. It's not using special in the way that we tend to think of it as, oh, you're so special to me. But even that's what the Course in Miracles is saying. Uh, you're special to me because I'm judging you as more valuable to me than someone else, that I've compared you to how everybody else is in my life, and you're the one that means the most. So in order to make you mean the most, in order to say that you mean more to me than anybody else, I have to then, what, compare you to everybody else, see what's lacking in everybody else in comparison to you so that I can see you as special. But in diminishing everybody else but you, these were people who could have been my saviors. These are people who could have also benefited me if I, hadn't, if I had not used them as a gauge of specialness instead. And that's going to bring me pain. 
because I'm going to always feel like I am in some type of competition with everything and everybody around me in order to maintain my specialness. So I'm going to see anybody else as a threat who I think may mean more to you than I do. So again, specialness just brings pain. Specialness has nothing to do with love. Specialness has to do with comparison. And when you come up as lacking, when you come up as less than you are, then I see you as sinful. I see you as guilty. I see you as bad. So the whole idea of sin, the whole idea of guilt, the whole idea of you being bad came from specialness, comparison, an attempt for one person to feel like they're better than another person. And in doing so, we diminish our usefulness to each other as each other's savior, as each other's helper. <clears throat> so Myrna says, not greater than or less than anyone. Christy says, what chapter pair? We, we are in chapter 24 and we're in paragraph three on page 502, the treachery of specialness, page 502. <sighs> Question, what if you feel special? What if you feel different? Like you don't belong here. See, even Christopher, even, even comparing in the sense that you feel like you're special and you don't belong here, means that at some level, there's a part of you that thinks you're better than here, greater than here. And so all, so what the Course in Miracles is saying is, no matter how we pull it off, we're just trying to be special by somehow or another caring, comparing ourselves to a situation, circumstance, or person, looking for what's lacking in it so that there's a part of us can feel like we are better than and greater than. So don't forget, the Course in Miracles is not judging us for our specialness. It's just telling us what the process of being special entails. Uh, and if you're struggling with this, then you're analyzing it. So don't analyze it. Don't analyze it. All you want to do is hear what it's saying, even if you don't agree with it. What it is saying is... Whenever we are trying to be special, we're just comparing ourselves to someone else and we're trying to see ourselves as greater or less than they are. It also says that if we weren't comparing each other, if we weren't trying to be better or worse than each other, then we could see each other as equals. We could see each other as love. We could see each other as helpful and we would join and we would love each other and we would help each other if we were not comparing ourselves to each other and judging each other and seeing each other as greater or lesser than. So, so no matter what the physical conditions are, the message is specialness, comparing yourself to someone else and seeing yourself as greater than them or less than them is not going to work. It's going to bring us pain. That's why I call this Hardcore Course of Miracles because it's just me sharing the, what the Course is saying is a fact. And the fact is, if I com constantly compare myself to you and see you as less than me, then we are not going to help and support each other. And therefore, where we could have been each other's saviors, where we could have been each other's helpers, we are diminishing each other. That's the message it's trying to get us to see. Can we see it another way? Of course we can. Can we not agree with it? Of course we can. Can we not understand it? Which the Course would say, me just not want to accept it. Of course we can. That's the beauty of this, is that you don't have to agree. It's just telling us that the whole idea of guilt and sin comes from the idea of being special and comparing and me seeing myself as better than someone else or someone else better than me and greater and less than in judgment. And out of that judgment, then I am looking for lacks in the other person. And so I am diminishing that person. And if I take power away from that person and don't see the power, in other words, we could use Trump as an example. If I am determined to not touch it, tap into the part of him that is love, just like there is a part of me that is love, 
then there can be no true healing until there is truth and love. That's the answer. It's the only answer. It's the answer we don't want to deal with because the, because we've been taught that if anything, love is weak and attack is strong. So I know that the ego is not going to like this. I know that there's a part of us that's not going to like what we're hearing because there's a part of us that loves to compare. And there's a part of us that loves to think we're better or less than somebody else. There's a part of us that loves to put other people down and, and criticize and judge other people. Every one of us has that part of the mind, and that's called the ego. And what this is saying is exactly opposite to what our ego loves to do because when I'm putting everybody down and judging everybody else, including Trump, the Course of Miracles are saying, buddy, what you are really trying to do is be special. You're just trying to make yourself special. It's your way of seeing yourself as better than him and better than everybody else. You're innocent. You're innocent. You're innocent. But that's what you're doing, Earl, whether you realize it or not. And then there's a part of me that goes, <clears throat> I don't want to hear that. I really don't want to hear that. Yeah, I know it. I know it. I know it. But then it said that in that last sentence. Uh, they chose their specialness instead of heaven and instead of peace and wrapped their specialness carefully in the belief in sin to keep it safe from truth. So let's, so specialness brings pain. You can feel it. Gotcha. Okay. Great examples. Uh, thank you for your comments. Thank you for your, your comments and your questions. Uh, could we learn to celebrate our unique God given gifts and perspectives with each other? That would be, seeing each other as each other's savior, Jason. That's right. Whenever we join, we're seeing each other as saviors. Whenever we come up with reasons to be separate from each other, we're diminishing each other. That is true. That is true. Okay, I, Kim, I need this topic too, let me tell you. So let's go to paragraph four. Let's go to paragraph four. Let me read that one. Here we go. I love, I love all the comments and I love how everybody is getting into this with me. You are not special. That's what it says. You are not special. If you think you are special and would defend your specialness, against the truth of what you really are, how can you know the truth? What answer that the Holy Spirit gives can reach you when it is your specialness to which you listen and which ask and answers? Specialness tiny answer, specialness tiny answer, soundless in the melody that pours from God to you eternally, in loving praise of what you are, this tiny specialness is all you listen to, is all you listen to. And that vast song of honor, that vast song of honor and of love for what you are, seems silent and unheard before the specialness mightiness. You strain your ears to hear specialness soundless voice. You strain your ears to hear its soundless voice and yet the call of God himself is soundless to you. Okay, now, let's see if we can get this. Now, remember, no analyzing, no analyzing, no analyzing, no analyzing, no analyzing. Hear it, hear it, hear it. Let me give you an example. You are, Now, the Course of Miracles is saying you are not special. What does that mean? You're not better than or less than anyone else. You're not better than anyone else. You're not less than anyone else. That's what it means when it says you are not special. It's not saying you are not unique. It's saying you are not special. You are not... You are not different from any, everybody else. You are love and everybody else is love also. You are free and everybody else is free also. You are a child of God and everybody else is a child of God also. You are innocent and everybody else is ultimately innocent. We're not talking about what their ego does. All of our egos act crazy and do selfish, painful things to others. All of our egos 
uh, if the ego of everyone, according to the course, feels lack. And so therefore it tries to make itself feel like it is whole and complete through comparison with others and then trying to make myself feel like I'm more important than anybody else or more special than anybody else. But the court says you are not special. You're not different. You're not different from anyone else. That's all they're saying. You are not special means you are not different. You are not different in terms of your beingness. You are not different. And then what did it tell us next? It said, well, if you guys think you are special, if you think you are different, and if you would defend your specialness against the truth uh, of what you really are, how can you know the truth of what you really are? In other words, if I'm trying to tell you that you are equal and I'm trying to tell you that you are whole and I'm trying to tell you that you are joined and I'm trying to tell you that you are the same, but you want to defend your difference. You want to defend your specialness. You want to defend, you want to defend being better than or less than. And how can you know the truth? And what is the truth? You are not special. See, that's what I mean when I say the course teaches itself. You are not special. If you think you are and would defend your specialness against the truth of what you really are, how can you know the truth? And then you go, well, what is the truth? You are not special. You are not different from love. You are not different from each other. You are all, you all are equally perfect and whole. You are not special. Uh, the Course in Miracles says, what answer that the Holy Spirit gives can reach you when it's your specialness to which you listen. So as long as a person is listening to the voice of their specialness, which tries to make them think they are better than or less than someone else, then how can they hear the answer that God the truth that the Course is giving to us right now. If I'm just listening to my specialness, how can I hear the answer that the Holy Spirit is trying to give me? Because the answer that the Holy Spirit, the voice for God, is trying to give me is, Earl, I'm trying to make you aware that you are not special. You're not better than or less than anyone else. If you want to believe that you're better than or less than anyone else, then how can the truth that I'm trying to tell you reach you when the truth that I'm trying to tell you is that you're equal to everyone else and that you're not better than or less than anyone else? That's the truth. That's what I'm trying to tell you. But the truth can't reach you while you're still defending the attitude that you are special, that you are better than or less than somebody else. And that's how can how can I reach you when that's all you're listening to? How can I reach you when that's the only answer that you believe is true. It says, what answer that the Holy Spirit gives can reach you when it is your specialness to which you listen and your specialness that asks and your specialness that answers. Then what does it tell us? Well, it says the tiny answer of specialness that, you, that soundless in the melody that pours from God to you eternally in loving praise of what you are is all you're listening to. He says, all we listen to is our desire for specialness. All we listen to is our judgments. All we listen to is how we're better than or less than or what's missing or what's lacking. He said, there's a part of us, there's a part of us that is addicted to our judgments and our specialness and seeing ourselves as greater than and less than and diminishing others so that we can be uh, uh, better than they are or, or putting ourselves down by thinking somebody else is better than we are. He says all of these are forms of specialness that keeps you from experiencing your brothers and sisters as your helpers, as your saviors, as your healers. So why is it that we don't know each other as each other's healers? because we are dealing with each other in terms of judging each other and comparing ourselves to each other and looking for lacks in each other because a part of us feels so insecure and so afraid. It's always trying to be special and it wants to be special by being either greater than or less than. Okay. And then, this, then I love it. Then, then uh, 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 Jesus says in the course, you know what? That's all you listen to. That's all you listen to. All you listen to is the voice of your desire to be special. Everything that you do is based on your desire to be special. Some part of you just wants to be different, just wants to be special, just wants to be different, that compares, that com constantly compares you yourself to everything in an attempt to be special. Then it says, and that vast song of honor and of love for what you are seems silent and unheard before its mightiness, that God has, has given us a vast song of honor. God has given us a vast amount of love. Uh, but the, the love of God, the voice for God, the voice for love, he says, seems silent and unheard because we're doing what? 
We are just listening to our judgments. We're just listening to our descriptions. We're just listening to our comparisons. We're just listening to our specialness, is what the Course in Miracles says, that we're straining to hear the voice that constantly makes us compare and think that we're special, greater than or less than, but yet we don't hear God's call. We don't hear love's call. That's what the Course is saying. That's the message. What is the message? You're so caught up in being special, Earl, and you're so caught up in judgment and comparison that you don't hear the voice for God calling to you because you're listening to yourself. You're listening to the voice you made up. You're listening to your ego, which is the same as saying you're listening to your specialness. So what does that paragraph say? I want to make sure I'm getting the message that that paragraph has in it. And that paragraph is saying to me you, that I'm not special, that I'm not better than anybody else. I'm not less than anybody else. And that if I think I am and I want to defend that way of looking at myself, I won't recognize the truth of who I really am. And it's also saying if I'm intent to just make myself to to just making myself special and comparing myself to everything and everybody trying to, to make myself less than or greater than, then I'm not going to hear the voice of God, the voice of the Holy Spirit. And in in the Course in Miracles, what did it say next? It say all we listen to is the voice of our specialness. Until we wake up, all we do is listen to the voice of our specialness, and so we can't even hear the voice for God, the voice for love, trying to reach us, the voice for truth, trying to reach us because we're so invested in the idea of specialness instead. Um, comments. We are all equal. We are all the same. I am not special. If I, if I... If I am not better or less than anyone else, meaning I am equal to all, um, I'm here late but happy to get what I can get. Uh, I love the way the Course forces us to be honest. And that's exactly, that's what I love about the Course in Miracles the most. What I love about the Course in Miracles the most is that it doesn't take any prisoners. And it doesn't really try to convince anybody of anything. It's just like saying there's the law of gravity. You can argue with it or not. But there's the law of gravity. You can like it or not. There's the law of gravity. You can understand it or not. That's the way the Course in Miracles is. It's like saying uh, you're going to go through a lot of pain if you keep comparing yourself to everybody else and you're trying to be better or less than them. You're going to go through pain if you keep judging and condemning somebody else so that you think you're better than they are. Uh, that's just going to cause you pain because you are taking a person that could be your savior and your helper and you're diminishing them and they're one with you. So if you diminish them, you're diminishing yourself. Um, the Course says, I can't tell you the truth if you don't want to hear the truth. And the truth is, you are not special. You are joined. You are one. You are the same as everybody else. What does that mean? You are love. You are one. You are connected. That's what it means. You are God. You are love. You are connected to God. It's right here on the page. Everything that I'm talking about is right here. It started out by telling us that specialness is established by a lack seen in another, maintained by searching for and keeping clear in mind all the lacks it can perceive. This does specialness seek, and this it looks upon, and always whom specialness thus diminishes would be your savior, had you not chosen to make of him a tiny measure of your specialness instead, against the littleness you see in the other, you stand as tall and stately, clean and honest, pure and unsullied by comparison with what you see. Nor do you understand, nor do you understand what? It's yourself that you are diminishing this way. So when the Course in Miracles talks about specialness, it's talking about comparison. I'm going to keep saying that because the ego has a tendency to want to make up its own definition of specialness. And the Course in Miracles definition of specialness, if you'll be honest with yourself, is exactly what specialness is. It's a comparison. How am I going to be special unless you're treating me differently from how you treat everybody else? And how are you going to treat me different from the way you treat everybody else unless you are comparing me in some way to everyone else? So actually, when I do that, I am just trying to increase my self-esteem by how much specialness I can get. I, I think you making me special increases my self-esteem and I want you to give me more specialness than you give anybody else. And of course, a miracle saying it's going to bring you pain. And if you'll be honest with yourself, that's exactly what your special relationships have done. Not a true loving, holy relationship, but a special relationship based on comparison and judgment. 
<clears throat> okay, that's right, Sandy. Just where I was at, and I turned to the course for answer I needed. I am loved. Thanks. That is exactly right. Uh, uh, Amitya says, it frees me to love. Yes, it frees me too. So beautiful. Thank you. This is hardcore Course in Miracles. I do not take any prisoners, and I do not analyze. I do not analyze because the Course in Miracles says the ego analyzes, the Holy Spirit accepts that this is a message that is trying to be delivered to us, and as a messenger, it's my job to deliver the message. It's not my job to do anything but to deliver the message as clearly as I possibly can. So let's look at the next paragraph on page 503, paragraph 5. 503, paragraph 5. Here we go. Let me read it first, then we'll go through it. <clears throat> you can defend your specialness. You can defend your specialness. But never will you hear the voice for God beside it. You can defend your specialness, but never will you hear the voice for God beside it. Beside what? Your specialness. Defending your specialness. If you defend your specialness, you'll never hear the voice for God. Your specialness and the voice for God speak a different language. Your specialness and the voice for God speak a different language. And the voice of specialness and the voice of God fall on different ears. To each special one, a different message and a message with different meaning is the truth. To the special ones, a different message and one with different meaning is the truth. Yet how can truth be different for each to each one? How can truth be different to each one? The special message is the special here. The special message is the special here. Convince the special they are different and apart. Each in his special sins and save from love, which doesn't see his specialness at all. Christ's vision is the enemy of those who think they're special. Because Christ's vision sees not what the special would look upon. And Christ's vision loves vision, vision which show the special ones that the specialness they think they see is an illusion. Boy, that is awesome. That is awesome. Let's go back to let's go back to chapter uh, paragraph five on page five oh three. It says now. It, so what does it say that we could defend? It says well you could you can defend your specialness. You can defend the idea that you are better than or less than someone, but you will never hear God's voice beside it. As long as you think you are greater than or less than and different, then it says you won't hear the voice for love because. The voice for love is a love that's saying we're not different, that we all are whole, that we all are complete, that we all are loved. It said they speak a different language and they fall on different ears. So the voice of specialness speaks one language. The voice of love speaks another language. And so they fall on different ears. Do you know that the next part of this paragraph is really a trip because it talks about the way that a person that thinks they're separate and special experiences everything. So the special messages, the special here, convince them that they're different and apart. So the Course in Miracles says that messages that come from the ego, messages that come from comparison, message, messages that come from specialness, always try to convince you that you're different and that you are apart. It tries to teach you, specialness tries to teach you that you got your own special sins and guilt that no one else has. And specialness is also something that keeps you safe from real love. Because a person that believes that they're separate, alone, and different, and greater than or less than, is a person that does not know true safety and does not know true love. Because love doesn't see your specialness at all. Love would not see you as greater than anybody else or less than anybody else. Love would not see you as different from anybody else. Love would not see you as separate from anybody else. So the Course in Miracles says love which doesn't see his specialness at all. Love doesn't see any differences because love does not compare. Love doesn't compare. Love does not compare. So love, real love, is not something that the ego really likes. Because the ego is based on the idea that we're separate and that we're different and that we're apart and that some of us are better than others. And the Course in Miracles says, well, you know what? Love is the opposite to all of that. Love is inclusive. Love doesn't see differences. 
Love sees everything as the same. Love sees us all as one. And love doesn't see any one of us as better or less than the other. So to somebody that wants to be special, the last thing they want is to be treated like everybody else. One of the most interesting phenomenon that I've experienced as a teacher and just in my everyday life is that I will say something I, I, I will say something loving to someone and they'll say, oh, you say that to everybody. And one of the things that I say when they say that to me is that's why you can believe me. You can believe me because what I'm saying to you is what I say to everybody. That's why you know it's real, because anything that's real applies to everyone and anything that's not real does not apply to everyone. So if I see the beauty in you and then I turn around and tell somebody else I see the beauty in them, then I'm really someone that's capable of seeing real beauty. But if I'm someone that says beauty is only in you, that you're the only one that's good, then I am looking through the eyes of the ego and the eyes of specialness and the eyes of fear. So I'm going to be constantly judging you and comparing you in order to uh, decide whether or not I'm going to continue to make you special. So the vision of love, he says, Christ's vision is their enemy. And what the Course in Miracles means by that is Christ's vision, what would be the vision of love, and the vision of love doesn't make any comparisons. So someone that wants to be special and different and better than or less than, they're not going to like the vision of love. They're not going to like the vision of Christ because it doesn't see the specialness that they want to look at. And Christ's vision, the vision of love, the vision of truth would show you that the specialness that you think you see is an illusion. Specialness is an illusion. Specialness is, fa is a false idea. Specialness is something that is not real. We are all the same. We are all children of God. We are all creations of love. We're the same. We're the same. We're the same. We're the same. We're all creations of love. We are all free. We are all connected. We are all spirit. We are all joined. But if you want to be special, if you want to be better than everybody else or less than everybody else, then the Course is saying you're not going to like this. And I, and I repeat, having a unique expression of yourself is not what I'm talking about when I'm talking about specialness that will bring you pain. So, so it's not saying that we're all going to be cookie cutters in the way that we express ourselves, even though we are alike in the way we all express ourselves. We are all expressing either some form of love or some form of fear. All of us are. We're all either taking responsibility or seeing ourselves as victims. We're either seeing ourselves as innocent or we're seeing ourselves as guilty. We're either seeing ourselves as happy or we're seeing ourselves as sad. We're just doing the same thing. We're all the same. But our ego, which is our desire to be special, our desire to be better than or less than, our desire to have exclusiveness, that, that part of us is the part of us that brings us pain, but the Course in Miracles just told us that it's also the part of us that keeps us from being able to hear the voice for God, the part of us that wants to be special, that wants to be right in the way that we're seeing things. That's the part of us that keeps us from seeing each other as each other's Savior. It says, it's Christ's vision would, he says, Christ's vision is their enemy, for it sees not what they would look upon and it would show the special ones that the specialness, the special ones think they see is an illusion. And you know that's true. I was talking to my friend, my brother Demola today about that, how specialness is such an illusion. You know, I treat, I'm treating you so special. You're so special to me. You're so special to me until you do the thing that upsets me, When until I see the thing that's lacking in the way that you treat me. And as soon as I see the what's lacking, that you are not making me special enough, I'm going to get rid of your butt. Because I am into specialness. I am be, I am into comparison. I, I need to feel like I'm greater and better and more important than anything and anybody else. And so that so therefore I'm not gonna hear the truth that tells me that love is inclusive. I'm not gonna hear the truth that says we need to love each other the same. I'm not gonna hear the truth that says I'm one with you because I and I'm one with everybody else. I'm not gonna hear the truth that says I should be loving everyone as much as I love you because of what? That interferes with my desire to be special which is greater than or less than. So I'd rather listen to the voice of specialness in myself than the voice of the Course in Miracles, which is telling me, which is telling me that love doesn't make any comparisons.
comments. The ego is everything that love isn't. No one is special because we are all one. The concept of specialness is an ego belief. Wow. True. Amen. Thank you, Raj. You are very welcome. Yeah, I get it. Christ's vision is a specialness buster. That's exactly right. It makes us see that specialness is an illusion. It's about how God sees it, not about the way we see it. Comment. What a relief and what a happy feeling to open our hearts and feel that we are all the same. At the point that we see each other as the same, that is the point that we are no longer making comparisons and we're seeing each other in a loving way and then we can be each other's saviors and each other's helpers. I'm going to do one more paragraph because this next paragraph is awesome and so I want to make sure that we get it, okay? So let's read through that one. Here we go. I, I, this is so good. I so needed to hear that this, this evening. Did you? I, I really did. <clears throat> so what would you see instead of your specialist? On page 503, paragraph 6, it says, What would the special one see instead? What would those who think they are special see instead? They would see the shining radiance of the Son of God. So like his father, that the memory of him springs instantly to mind. And with this memory of the, tr of the Son of God, the Son remembers his own creations, as like to him as he is to his creator. And all the world he made, and all his specialness, and all the sins he held in its defense against himself, will vanish as his mind accepts the truth about himself, as it returns to take their place. This is the only cost of truth. This is the only cost of truth. What is the only cost of truth? You will no longer see what never was, nor hear what makes no sound. You will no longer see what never was, separation and specialness, nor hear what makes no sound, separation and specialness. Is it a sacrifice to give up nothing? Is it a sacrifice to give up nothing and to receive the love of God forever? Is it a sacrifice to give up nothing and to receive the love of God forever? Is it a sacrifice to give up nothing and to receive the love of God forever? Okay, so so what is it saying? It's saying, what would, what would we see instead of our false ideas of specialness, of being better or less than each other? What he says, what you're going to see is the shining radiance. I'll put it this way. Um... I'm going to see your shining radiance so like God, your creator, that the memory of God is going to spring instantly to my mind. If, if, if I don't compare myself to you, if I don't judge you, if I don't do specialness with you, then the Course in Miracles says I'm going to see a shining radiance of who you really are. And that shining radiance is going to be so much like the radiance of love and the radiance of God that I'm going to remember God instantly. I'm going to remember who I am instantly. I'm going to remember love instantly. And then it says, and with this memory, what memory? The memory of love, the memory of God, the memory of our true self, the memory of my true self, it says, I then remember my own creations as like to me as I am to my creator. Because you are the child of God. So when it talks about the son of God, it's talking about you. So if you were to read this in the first person, it would blow your mind. Let me give you an example. What would I see instead of specialness? If I really want to see beyond specialness, what would I see in you? What would I see in myself? He says, well, I would see the, shine, my, the shining radiance. I would, see the, I would see your shining radiance so like your creator that the memory of the creator would spring instantly to my mind and your mind. What would you see instead? The shining radiance of the Son of God so like his father that the memory of his father springs instantly to mine. And with this memory, what memory? The memory of God, the memory of love. You, the Son, remembers your own creations which are as like to you as you are to your creator and all the world of the ego you made and all of your specialness and all the sins that you held in defense against yourself will vanish i'll say it again 
And all when you remember God, when you remember the love, when you remember truth, all the world of the ego you made and all your specialness and all your sins you held in defense against yourself will vanish, will vanish when as your mind accepts the truth about yourself. All your pain, all your fear, all your comparisons, all your specialness will vanish when as your mind accepts the truth about yourself and as the truth returns to take their place as the truth returns to take the place of the specialness. So what is the cost of doing the Course in Miracles? What is the only cost of truth? Well, it's, it tells us right here. The only cost of truth, the only cost of accepting the truth is you will no longer see what never was. What is it that never was? Your specialness. You're being different from everybody else, better than or less than. Nor hear what makes no sound. You're no longer going to hear sounds that speak for specialness and difference and separations and judgment. And then the greatest question of all is right at the end of that paragraph. Is it a sacrifice to give up nothing? Specialness is nothing. It's an illusion. It's something you could lose in a second. You do one little thing I don't like, you out of here. You do one little thing I don't like, I'm gone. I didn't really ever really give you anything real in the first place because what could change was never love. And if I would drop you just because you won't do what makes me feel special, which which the truth is, the, you won't you won't you won't uh, uh see anybody else as better uh, or see anybody else as less than me then i'm going to get rid of you because my specialness needs comparison it needs you to see lacks in others so that i am the one that is the greatest because i'm trying to validate myself so the course is telling us that it's not a sacrifice to give up specialness it's not a sacrifice to give up comparison because you're going to receive God's love forever. Wouldn't you rather receive a love that you cannot lose? I want a love I can't lose. I'm not interested in the special love that human beings give each other based on comparison, exclusion, and judgment. You can have it. You don't ever have to want me as a boyfriend, a partner, a mate, anybody out there that wants to do the comparison deal uh, and the judgment deal, then I'm not interested. I, I want I want to connect with people who we want to be saviors and helpers and we see each other as the same in value and in love. I don't need the judgment of specialness. So yes, I agree. It's not a sacrifice to give up nothing to receive the love of God forever. Did you hear me? It is not a sacrifice to give up our false ideas in order for us to receive the truth forever. Woo! All right. Let's take a breath right now. I'm going to complete here and I'm going to do a quick little review to kind of bring together what we've heard already. I'm Earl Purdy. I'm a full-time teacher of the truth and the Course in Miracles. If you'd like to make a financial expression of appreciation because this is what I do in the world, this is my function, then you could go to my website, Earl Purdy, P-U-R-D-Y dot com. I thoroughly would appreciate that. EarlPurdy.com. I'm also an astrologer and a numerologist that does soul astrology and numerology. And it's just another way for us to receive the exact same messages in a brand new way that could be more helpful. So I do what I call clarity sessions where I bring my 40 years of study and counseling into a personal session with you to help you go past any blocks and any pain that you are going through right now or misperceptions. Go to my website, earlpurdy.com, and and uh, go to the part that talks about clarity sessions, and it will give you more details about what I do. I do my next class at 1 p.m. on Sunday on Facebook Live, Mountain Time, on the Earl Purdy page on Facebook. Earl Purdy page, 1 o'clock p.m. Mountain Time. I do A Course in Miracles on Facebook Live before a live audience. On Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Mountain Time, on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Mountain Time, I do another live Facebook Live broadcast called The Way of Mastery. The Way of Mastery, another very profound healing teaching. 7 p.m. on Tuesdays. And then on Thursdays, I do what we're doing right now the hardcore Course in Miracles, where I get down in this Course in Miracles material, in the book with Course in Miracles students to deliver the message, to help us hear the message, not to analyze it, not to deal with a thousand different stories, but to 
hear what is the message that the course is trying to get us to hear and to know. So let's uh, do the, a quick recap before we finish up. Okay, so the first thing, that, do you know that the first thing that we heard is that comparison, I, I want to really emphasize what the Course in Miracles definition of specialness is. So what is it, what did it tell us? It says, first of all, specialness makes comparisons. Specialness is another word for ego. Ego, specialness, ego, specialness, fear, separation. In the, from a Course in Miracles perspective, it's all the same. Everything is either fear or love. So let's see what happens if we use fear or love as substitute words. Comparison must be a fear device, for love makes no comparison. Specialness, fear always makes comparisons. Fear is established by a lack seen in another, and fear is maintained by searching for and keeping clear in sight all lacks fear can perceive. This does the fearful mind seek. And this the fearful mind looks upon. And always whom the fearful mind thus diminishes would be your savior. Had you not made of this person a tiny measure of your specialness instead. Against the littleness that you see in the other person. You stand as tall and stately, clean and honest. Pure and unsullied sullied by comparison with what you see. And what is it that you don't understand? You don't understand that you are diminishing yourself. You are diminishing yourself when you do what? Try to establish your specialness by looking for lacks in another. We don't realize that we do specialness by searching for and keeping clear in sight all the lacks we can perceive. This is what specialness seeks. This is what specialness looks upon. What's lacking, what's missing, what's not there. And always whom specialness would diminish would be your savior had you not chosen to make of that person attain a measure of your specialness instead. Against the littleness you see in the other person, you stand as tall and stately, clean and honest, pure and unsullied. By comparison with what you see, nor do you understand, it is just yourself that you are diminishing this way. And what would you see instead? You would see the shining radiance, the shining radiance of the child of God. So like the child's creator, that the memory of the creator springs instantly to mind. And with this memory of the creator, you remember your own creations as like to you as you are to your creator. And all the world you made and all your specialness and all the so-called sins you held in defense against yourself will vanish as your mind accepts the truth about yourself as it returns to take their place. This is the only cost of truth. What is the only cost of truth? The only cost of truth is that you will no longer see what never was, which was your specialness, your sinfulness, or your guilt. That's what never was. You will no longer hear what makes no sound. That is the voice of specialness, the voice of fear, the voice of guilt. Is it a sacrifice to give up nothing? Is it a sacrifice to give up nothing? Is it a sacrifice to give up specialness? Is it a sacrifice to give up comparing and seeing yourself as better or less than so that you can receive God's love? And how long are you going to receive God's love? You're going to receive God's love forever. You're going to receive God's love forever. Thank you, John. I'm glad that, that you found me also. Ro, I'm so glad you love my glasses. I'm here to look at you through the eyes of love. Karen, love hardcore Course in Miracles. Hope to see you here next week. I hope to see you too. Christy, thank you, says thank you. Holden, thank you. Amani, I give up false ideas to receive the truth forever and forever. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, all my mighty companions. Don't let the treachery of specialness, which is the treachery of comparison, cause you or bring you pain. Mighty companions, share this on your timeline, please. Please like my page so that you can be notified when I'm doing live broadcast. Hey, I don't even know what to say. I'm so blown away by you. See you next time.